All right, ladies and gentlemen, who is ready to be traumatized? Yeah? You in the back? Good, good. That's why you clicked on the video. Another game journalist has written an article about Battlefield 2042, what Battlefield needs moving forward, and generally just alarmingly delusional takes about Battlefield that make you question how this was even published in the first place. In fact, the takes in this article are so bad, I would not be surprised to learn this was AI generated. So without further ado, let's get some brain damage. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I stream every single day on Twitch and YouTube at the very same time. Turn notifications on and follow my Twitch first link in the description. Also join the Discord and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All links are in the description. The author of this bombshell article entitled it, The next battlefield should go out of its way to satisfy one side of its community. And upon initial inspection of just the title itself, it has some partial truth, but it's just typical clickbait trash, and I can identify that as a YouTuber. I'm an expert. He starts this article off by essentially saying that Battlefield 2042's support has been ended after Season 7, and apparently fans are quote-unquote eager for the next entry in the franchise. This is how you know this guy just sits at a desk and writes drivel for a living. If this man was truly part of the core Battlefield community, he would not ever say that Battlefield fans are eager for the next title. Unfortunately, we're not really allowed to be eager because whenever Battlefield fans get eager, we get disappointed in a monumental way. If anything, and please comment down below, I'd be willing to bet the majority of people are now terrified about the next Battlefield release, including myself. How could you feel any other way coming out of BF5 and 2042 back to back? So we're already off to a banger start in this article, but we're just scratching the surface. So after he makes that completely out of touch statement, he then leans into Battlefield going into the immersion realism route with the next game. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, what was the name of the article? Oh, yes. The next battlefield should go out of its way to satisfy one side of its community. So this guy actually thinks the majority of people that play Battlefield would be satisfied with turning Battlefield into a milsim. He's completely unaware that quote-unquote hardcore Battlefield players are less than 1% of the player base. Battlefield Hardcore players are an extremely vocal minority, okay? It's a vocal minority. The majority of Battlefield players couldn't care less about realism or hardcore or any of that stupid trash. That is not what made the franchise great at its peak. That is not what the franchise has ever been at its peak. Or really at any point ever, even stretching back all the way to Battlefield 2. Sometimes I get comments like, oh, these COD kids could never hang in BF2. Bro, you seem to misremember that you could dolphin dive in Battlefield 2 like a psychopath, okay? That doesn't really seem that realistic. But regardless of all these little tiny realism this and immersion that arguments, the grandiose delusion of this entire article in general is this guy doesn't understand anything to do with Battlefield. He doesn't understand Battlefield's current situation. And in order to, in his mind, save the franchise, they have to double down on something Battlefield has never been. And realistically, Battlefield has the easiest Battlefield release of all time coming up, okay? That is genuinely my opinion. They have so many easy settings. They have all the feedback in the world. They have such a simple plan moving forward. Deliver a normal, traditional Battlefield game that doesn't make any people angry with stupid decisions like adding tornadoes or adding weird clown skins or stupid voice lines or specialists or removing the class system in yada yada yada. Risking the entire franchise on something as stupid as Immersion, which is already heavily available in Battlefield, even in Battlefield 2042, is about the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Later on in the article, he goes on to cite this Battlefield 3 hyper-reality mod that came about probably over a year ago at this point, as how the Battlefield community voiced how conducive the games are to more realistic gameplay. You want to know what happened to the Battlefield 3 reality mod? Yeah, it died. It died. Instantly. Okay, no one plays that. And on top of the fact that it died, it just sucked in general anyway. Okay, it did. It was unbearable to play. 
The visibility was terrible, you would die to one-shot DMRs in completely unpredictable locations. Battlefield does not lend itself well to realistic gameplay because it wasn't designed to be realistic. Stop trying to mesh arcade and realism. Stop it. I'm gonna lose my mind. You saw what COD tried to do with Modern Warfare 2, trying to make that game like the slowest, most realistic, immersive experience ever. People hated Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And guess what they're doing? They completely 180'd on that, and all they've done after they release Modern Warfare 2 is make the games faster and faster and faster, and we see the same trend with Call of Duty Black Ops 6, which was just shown in which they introduced a feature called Omni Movement, where you can move in any direction while sprinting for the first time ever in Call of Duty. And that's a good example of Call of Duty listening to their player base. They released Modern Warfare 2, they got kicked in the teeth with feedback, and they said, Oh, okay, whoa, we'll just 180, and guess what? Everyone's back to playing Call of Duty, Warzone saw a resurgence, and then Black Ops 6 followed suit. And to be completely honest, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that is exactly what happens with the next Battlefield game. I hope the feedback from Battlefield 2042 kicks the developers in the ass a little bit, and they stop making catastrophic errors. And again, it isn't like this is complicated. People have had the successful Battlefield formula in my comment section for years. I've seen multiple different people outline what in my opinion would be pretty straightforward, great Battlefield experiences. Why can't the developers see how to do that? But you know what guys, maybe I'm just full of garbage because this game journalist says that a realism mode should be offered alongside the traditional gameplay of the next Battlefield, being a perfect fit for players who want a more strategic and immersive gameplay experience. I'm just going to take a firm stance on this. If you play a multiplayer FPS game for immersion, go play single player. Battlefield is immersive just by itself. The gameplay's insane to look at. The visual effects are literally second to none. There are tornadoes going around, there are vehicles flying around, massive explosions. The maps are huge. It's immersive by default. You do not need to make it more immersive. It happens naturally based on the design of the game. So leaning into this aspect will not do anything but make the game worse. A great example of how this just happens naturally is Battlefield 1. You don't need to do anything to Battlefield 1 for it to feel immersive. The design and the art and the style of the game carry it even though the gameplay wouldn't be considered quote-unquote realistic. Do you understand what I mean? And I'll just cap this video off by a sentence that really might be the worst sentence in this entire article. Quote, In this way, by adapting Battlefield, the next Battlefield release could appeal to all walks of the FPS experience. And I'm just going to paraphrase. You don't need to adapt Battlefield to adapt to all walks of the FPS experience because Battlefield needs to adapt to what made Battlefield great. The Battlefield experience. Stop trying to change what works. And with that, I refuse to read any more of this trash article, and I'm sure you do as well. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section. I'm sure some of you will have some very strong opinions, which I really, I really love to read those. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Again, I stream every single day on Twitch and YouTube at the very same time. And follow my Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. All links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.